Okay, so if you thought that the established identity problems were going to go away, uh, unfortunately they're coming back again. So this time we're, we're working with established identity, but we're working with our sum and difference formulas, and that's what we're going to look at. So uh, there's a couple different steps to, to do uh, with this. There's some strategies that we talked about here when, back in that section when we did the identities. So uh, in the notes, what I did was I, I started with the left-hand side and I worked it out to be the right-hand side. Well, instead of doing that, I'm actually going to follow our strategies here. And that would say that, first of all, I want to change things into sines and cosines if possible. The left-hand side already has sines and cosines, so I'm going to go ahead and change the, the right-hand side instead. So I'm going to do this differently than what's in the notes to show you that there's more than one way of solving these problems. As long as you show that one side equals the other and the math is correct, then you've proven and established the identity. So we're going to do that on this one. I'm first going to change the right-hand side into sines and cosines. I'm actually not going to do anything with the left-hand side. So this one I'm just going to rewrite as it is. And then on the right-hand side, I'll put in our identity. So I have this. This is the same. And then over here, I'm going to put identities in for tangent x and tangent y. Tangent can be written as sines and cosines, sine over cosine. So we're going to do sine x over cosine x. And over here, I'm going to do sine y over cosine y. The reason why I'm leaving a space in here is because I notice that now I have two separate fractions, and one of the other uh, strategies on this paper says uh, get common denominators if they're fractions. So that's going to be my other strategy that I'm going to do here. So since I recognize I already have a fraction, then I'm definitely going to have to get common denominators uh, to continue with the problem. So that's why I wrote some spaces in here. My common denominator is going to be cosine x and cosine y. This one already has the cosine x, but I need to multiply top and bottom by cosine y. And then on the other, uh, the other one, I want to put in cosine x top and bottom since I already have the cosine y in the bottom there. So I'm just doing, again, uh, common denominators uh, for each one. So next step, again, I'm not working, I'm not doing anything with the right-hand side, or le left-hand side, rather. I'm leaving the left-hand side alone. The right-hand side is the one I'm working out. Uh, down here, I have cosine x, cosine y. And when I multiply the, the top part out, I get sine x cosine y plus sine y cosine x. I'm just multiplying these together and putting it out there. So I've already matched the bottom. The bottom of the fractions are the same. However, this part on top, I need to make both sides equal. So if I look at sine x cosine y, and I have a cosine x sine y, that's actually going to be our first formula that we have there. The order is switched here, but it still means exactly the same thing. It's still going to be the, uh, the top one. So then what I can do is I can just put in uh, the identity for that. So I have this side is going to be the same. And now I have the other side. I can make that exactly the same as well. So then I, I get both sides are going to be uh, equal to each other. So now I've shown that the left-hand side is equal to the right-hand side. Both sides are equal. I, I work with this side all the way down until I got that side equal to the other one. So again, this is another way that you could have solved that same problem. Uh, but the idea is you're working one side all the way down until one side equals the other. Your answer is actually all the work you're doing here to show how you get from one side to the other.